Senator Rubio. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Um, oftentimes I hear the role of India's future discussed as a sort of counterbalance to China. I think it should be much more than that. Uh, obviously there's an element of that, but I think India in and of itself is a nation with incredible potential, and there's incredible potential in our bilateral relationship. So my questions about military exchanges are not towards the desire to use viewing India as some sort of surrogate counterbalance to China and the region, but rather uh, one that, um, that recognizes what I think is their potential and ultimately their rightful role in South Asia and across the world. So how do you see the future of U.S.-India uh, military-to-military relations progressing in, in, the, in the near future? I know there's uh, been concern in the past within India that the United States has either proven to be unreliable and or uh, a meddling in, in, uh, nation that if you sell arms and they want to go around and tell them what to do internally. So how, how has that progressed and how do you view the future of our military to military engagements? Thank you, Senator. I do believe that this is an area of uh, extraordinary progress and ambition uh, in both countries. Uh, we have seen the growth in our defense ties that has dramatically um, uh, uh, scaled up over the past decade. Uh, our defense trade, which has gone from something in the neighborhood of 250 to 300 million uh, per year, is now um, over 14 billion. Uh, our exercises have grown tremendously and in complexity. We are just concluding our air-to-air -air combat exercises, red flag, um, but also we're doing exercises not only bilaterally but including increasingly trilaterally. Malabar is now done with U.S., India, and Japan. Uh, India is a, a participant in RIMPAC. Um, we are also, I believe, on the cusp of an era where we could well see uh, the U.S. and India doing joint or coordinated operations across the Indo-Pacific. Um, and we believe that India has an important role to play as a net security provider and a guarantor of a, a uh, open uh, and rules-based maritime order across the Indo-Pacific. You discussed for a moment the trilateral uh, cooperation, and you mentioned specifically Japan. It's my understanding that that relationship is ripe, ripe for growing. What is the, how is that moving forward? How, how are those two countries interacting now, both economically and militarily? We have certainly seen a dramatic uh, increase and scale up on, uh, on, on India-Japan ties. Um, on the economic side, uh, Japan has uh, um, uh, announced a major $100 billion investment in the Mumbai-Delhi corridor, uh, but I think uh, is increasingly looking to uh, prioritize India as an investment destination for uh, Japanese investment. Um, but we're also seeing uh, increased cooperation between India and Japan on the defense side. Um, uh, I noted the um, discussions, the, the, the inclusion of Japan in the Malabar exercises, not only when um, it is happening um, in, in the, in the um, uh, Indian Ocean region, but in every, in every locale. Um, and I do believe that we will um, also look to enhance our cooperation on other areas such as uh, uh, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief and other platforms where the United States, India, and Japan can really advance uh, um, a joint effort and a shared effort. It's also clear that groups like ISIS and other radical Islamic groups see India as a prime potential target for fomenting uh, the rise of, of uh, surrogate groups and affiliates within India. How would you assess the U.S.-Indian counter-terrorism uh, and intelligence sharing uh, relationship? And is it one that's growing along the lines of our strategic partnership and our military partnership? It certainly is. We have a very robust cooperation with India on counterterrorism that includes intelligence and information sharing, uh, includes uh, um, the sharing of tools and technologies and best practices so that we can uh, enhance the capabilities to combat terrorism and violent extremism. Um, we have a homeland security dialogue and a joint counterterrorism working group that is increasingly looking at both regional and global terrorist networks. Uh, India has been a strong partner in, uh, in, in combating terrorism financing uh, that increasingly uh, we have concerns about the reach of terrorist financing networks across uh, South and Central Asia and, and India's been a strong partner in that. And we believe that the, the 
potential for greater cooperation is, is there. As we deepen our ties on intelligence and on security, we are also deepening our ties um, in, in the internal security matters as well. And my last question, you know, in, in Indian history, there's uh, multiple examples of very prominent and successful women that have been leaders in their government, and yet we also see these reports about the treatment of women at the societal level, particularly in some local jurisdictions where crimes committed against women, ranging from assault to, to uh, um, all-out harassment, is often ignored by local officials. Is it your sense that at the national level that its, that it's leaders understand that they're facing a significant global uh, challenge, a uh, global perception challenge, and a reality challenge on the ground and the treatment and status of women in their society. You know, when we had the the rape, I believe four years ago now, of Nirbaya um, in on a bus in New Delhi, and and the brutal murder, um, um, it created not only the shock and outrage in the United States and around the world, but it actually, uh, the biggest and most vocal reaction was in India itself. And as a result of that, there has been, I believe, a tremendous um, awareness of the challenges that women's security um, in India and, 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 and that law enforcement face in advancing that. Uh, a great deal of sensitivity now in the Indian media and civil society to not push that under the rug but to actually put it out into the open. Um, but also some progress. The Verma Commission, uh, which was uh, headed by a former Chief Justice of the Indian Supreme Court, um, came out with a number of critical rec recommendations that are many of which are now in place and acted and implemented. Um, and New Delhi has uh, created a new women's rights bill to specifically address issues of women's security and in curbing gender-based violence. So this is a very important issue within India, but it is, a, it is, it is going to take a great deal of focus and effort, not just at the national level, but to drill it all the way down to the local level to change dramatically and evenly across the board uh, the prospects of, of women and girls in India to live in a secure um, uh, environment that protects their rights. Thank you, Madam Secretary.